Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Foundation Level Certification. We are in Chapter 5 talking about managing the test activities and today we are continuing with 5.1 that is test planning and as a part of it today we shall be covering another topic called as testing contribution to release and iteration planning. When it comes to release and iteration planning, of course, anyone can really correlate it to the Agile methodology. Of course, the new syllabus brings a lot of renovation to the syllabus in terms of blending it from traditional as well as Agile perspective as well. And here, as we talk about the planning in the previous tutorial, we discussed about the traditional model that how exactly planning happens once in the beginning of the project. Here, we are trying to talk about the Agile methodologies as well. Now, given that the in Agile methodology, the planning happens at multiple places and several point of time. That means right in the very beginning, if you really talk about, we do have a PI planning, which is more of the product increment. And then every single PI may have collection of releases. Thus, each release will have a dedicated release plan. And same way, within a release, you may have seven to eight possible uh, sprints. And it totally depends on the organization, no standard specification. So it depends on what is the length of your release. And depending on the size of your sprint, that is the length of your sprint, you may determine the number of sprints as well. Now, every single sprint at the kickoff will have a sprint planning as well. That means when it comes to agile methodology, planning happens at multiple points of time. And the scope of work is also different. That means during release planning, we talk about the entire release. And when it comes to sprint planning, we talk about the sprint perspective itself. But the question is, what should testers contribution be when it comes to these release and sprint planning? So ISTQB also keeps it very generic. So sprint planning is equal to iteration planning or sprint is equal to iterations. So let's quickly check up what exactly the contribution of tester would be in terms of release and iteration planning. So when we talk about here, number one, in iterative SDLC models, typically two kinds of plannings occur, that is release planning and sprint planning. When it comes to release planning, it looks ahead to the release of a product, defines and redefines the product backlog, and may involve refining larger user stories into a set of smaller user stories. It also serves as a basis for the test approach and the test plan across all iterations. Now, in simple words, all we are trying to talk about is during the release planning, it's very important to understand the major intention is to identify the set of items, what you'll be working in that particular release and building it up as a product backlog. But of course, a PO, which is product owner, is someone who's responsible to, you know, keep refining it over a period of time. In fact, the product backlog grooming or product backlog refinement is an activity in the Agile methodology, which happens every single week. That is to keep checking what is the most priority and what is the highest priority items in our releases at any point of time. Thus, it is defining and redefining every periodic difference, right? And at the same time, it is really important for PO again to, you know, break those large chunk of works into simplified stories or a bigger story into more simpler story that a team can take it up during a particular spread. So it's very important for PO to work at this point of time. My responsibility as a tester would be to help the PO understand, review and contribute for making it more efficient. And that's exactly what does it say. So testers involved in release planning to participate in writing testable user stories and acceptance criteria. The two major critical element of planning phase at this point of time is to help the PO write effective user stories and at the same time, uh, testable acceptance criteria because sometimes the acceptance criteria could be vague and that's where a tester needs to review it and acknowledge that yes this is something what we can achieve also to add here of course uh, participating in the project and pro product quality risk sorry quality risk is also called as uh, pro product risk so it's project and product risk analysis that means identifying the risk areas related to the release entirely and then estimating test effort associated with user stories determining the test approach for the entire release and the plan 
of the test for the entire release as well. That means on a higher level for this particular release, what are the major activities, what we, what we may, may, may have to do, and at the same time, uh, what exactly are those set of design activities, what we may have to perform, that is the levels, the test cases, the test techniques and whatnot. So approach is a strategy collection of everything, what you define in order to test that particular set of item. So in line, of course, we do have another item, which is within a release, you may severally have a lot of sprints. And then we do again, a set of sprint planning at the beginning of each sprint. Now, when it comes to a sprint planning, of course, we know that now we have dedicatedly picked up some of the stories from the product backlog. And all we are trying to implement are those stories within a particular sprint. Now, sprint length may vary depending on the methodologies and organization practices, but on an ideal, uh, we do have a two week sprint, which is generally for 10 working days. So generally during the sprint planning, the major objective is to pick up the items from the product backlog and select it for the sprint. Now, during this particular session, it is again a responsibility of the tester to be proactively participating in terms of reviewing the work products, doing a deep dive of the product and project risk analysis, and then targeting only on those stories on all those activities related to testing, which are shortlisted for that particular sprint. So let's quickly look here. The iteration planning, which is sprint planning, looks ahead to the end of uh, to the end of a single iteration and is concerned with the iteration backlog itself, which is sprint backlog. Also, testers involved in iteration planning participate in the detailed risk analysis of user stories. Now, that's the key difference. When it comes to release planning, I'm worried about the whole release. At this point, I'm worried about only the stories which are shortlisted for that particular sprint. Also, uh, determine the testability of the user story. Break down the user stories into generic tasks, what you might be performing in order to accomplish this story. So testing tasks can be created and estimate the test effort for all the test tasks and then identify and refine the functional and non-functional aspects of the test object. That means now at this point, I can certainly deep dive at more granular level to talk about every respective user story and see what are the scope of work we may have to do and how much we have to do. So the only difference is at release, you're worried about the release scope. At Sprint, you're worried about the concrete user stories and do perform these sort of activities. So keeping it very to the point, that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.